Let's do a problem that's a little bit more difficult here. Uh, let's read it. Spencer is eight years old and needs $65,000 for college when he is 18. So it's a pretty realistic problem. Uh, his parents decide to set up a college fund. And they know right now they can invest 5500 every year for the first five years. But what they want to know is how much do they need to deposit at the end of each year for the following five years to accumulate the required amount. And the account that they're using right now has an interest rate of 9%, which is pretty good. So let's uh, write out our givens. And our givens in this problem is we need a future value of $65,000. We know that. Uh, we have an interest rate of 9% APR and we have uh, two n's in this problem. n1, our first number of years, is five years. Okay, And our n2 is going to be five years as well. Now we know here that our first A, we have an A1 that we do know, and that's $5,500. We need to find A2. Okay? So let's start out the problem by drawing our cash flow diagram. And we're actually going to draw the entire cash flow diagram for this one. All right. Uh, we're going to start out. Uh, for the first five years, we're going to make a regular series of, of investments. That's the first five years. Remember, those are $5,500. So let's clean this up a little bit here. We make a regular series of investments. This is $5,500, and that is A1. Okay, And remember, this is time 0, 1, 2, 3, four and five. From then on out, for the next five years, we need to make a different series of payments. Okay, And I'm going to draw the arrows a little bit longer here because the problem implies that we're going to have to invest a little bit more, but that might not be the case. Okay, uh, We really just need to show that we have a different series here and we're going to solve for what that value is. And remember, our future value, F, needs to be 65,000. The point of view here is the investor, which is Spencer's parents. All right. Now, we can start out this problem uh, by looking at our first series, our first five years. If we look at our first five years uh, and then carry forward the next five years, uh, we can solve this problem. So what we're going to do is look at the first series of five years. We're going to carry that amount forward because that amount's going to stay in the account. And then we're going to solve for A2 here. So let's start out. We've got our factor F. We need to find the future value of this in initial series of payments. Uh, we're going to multiply that by A. We're going to use the factor for this problem. Uh, F slash A, 9% uh, and 5 years. Okay, And in this case, we have $5,500 multiplied by the F slash A factor, 9% uh, 5 years. So let's go to the 9% interest table. Let's go down to 5 years. And remember, we are looking for the F slash P factor at 5 years. 1.539. Okay. Now is that right? No, we're looking for the F slash A factor. Okay? F slash A factor at five years and nine percent. That's five point nine eight five. Okay, I almost got mixed up there. So we're gonna use the five point nine eight five here. Point nine eight five. And that's gonna give us a total balance of $32,917.50. And, and remember, we need to carry that amount forward for the remaining five years. But we also need to account for this series A2.
Okay, so the way we're going to set this problem up is we're going to say $65,000, that's our F, is going to equal, and remember we're dealing with the second series of payments now, and the balance that we have after five years. And so we're going to say we have our P, which is this 32,917, multiplied by the F slash P factor, 9% and five years because we're carrying it forward five additional years from year five to year ten. And we're going to add the series, the amount that accumulates from the series, and that is F slash A, nine percent, and that series happens for five years. So let's put the, these values in here. Uh, Thirty-two thousand nine seventeen. Let's try that a little bit better. Nine seventeen. And we're going to multiply that by F slash P, 9% and 5. Now we're going to use the, the 1.539. Okay. Need to remember to use that. 1.539. And we're going to add to that our A, which we do, don't know at this point, multiplied by the F slash A factor, 9% and 5. The F slash A factor, 9% and 5, is again 5.985, the same value we used before. And we're going to solve for A. And A in this case is equal to $2,395.98. That's how much Spencer's family needs to invest uh, during each uh, investment period there for the next five years. And we know we look at this closely that uh, the arrows are actually a little bit smaller in this region. Okay. Now let's also, I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly in one step. So the one step solution, as you get proficient in these, you can, you can use this one step. We're going to say the F is equal to, remember we broke this up, broke this problem up. We're going to take the first series of five years we're going to take that, that amount that's accumulated at that point, carry it forward five years, and then add that to the second series that occurs from year five to year ten. So what that means we have to do is we have to take the initial series, A, find out how much that accumulates in the first five years, which is our F slash A, our 9%, and five years, and multiply that by the F slash P factor, 9% and 5 years. What we've done here is we said here's the first series, uh, he, the amount that's accumulated after 5 years and we take that amount and assume it stays static in that account and gains interest for the following 5 years bef between year 5 and year 10. Uh, remember also during that period we have this A2, our second series of investments that accumulates over the course of 5 years and that's F slash A uh, to the 9% and 5. And what we're going to do here is just throw the numbers in really quickly. We know that we need $65,000. We know our initial A is 5500 uh, We are going to multiply that by the F slash A factor, 9% and 5. That's 5.985. All right, remember, we're going to multiply that by the F slash P factor as well. And we recall that's 1.539. Add that to the second series, uh, which is A, we don't know. And the F slash A factor, 9%, and 5 is again 5.985. And if we solve for A, that A is equal to $2,395.98. We get the same value both ways. Uh, so you can use this kind of a shortcut uh, if you like. As long as you understand where to break up the problem, you'll be all set.